Hi, uh, welcome to module 32. In this uh, module, we are going to learn state assignment. So, state assignment is a very important part, and uh, it's good to know how to do efficient state assignment, at least for small circuits which you do by hand. So, uh, state assignment uh, is it act as a process. It comes in the uh, it's, it's an intermediate step. So, you start with a state diagram, and the state diagram ca captures the functionality. So. Uh, when you have a particular problem, the state diagram that you come up with captures what the input output relationships are and uh, how the states should transition. The next step that you take is take the states and you have to assign uh, the bit vectors associated with it. So, so far we have been doing things like for S naught we will give 0, 0, for S 1 we will give 0, 1 and so on. But unless you do that, you cannot go to the next stage where you go and look at the excitation tables of the flip flops. So, if you have only the symbols for the state names, you cannot operate them and you cannot get bit representation. So, state assignment is uh, a binary encoding, you start with your representation, you start with your state diagram and for each of the states, you come up with some kind of encoding, you start giving bit vector names instead of symbolic names and once you have that, you can then uh, go and look at excitation table of the flip flop. Are arrive at input output relationship and so on. So, we, we were uh, so far just doing one state assignment. So, we came up with something and then said ok, if we do this state assignment, this will be the circuit and this will be the output and so on. But uh, it is it is quite likely that your state machines have multiple state assignments which are all very competing. So, what I mean by competing is that in terms of the number of gates that you have, things could be different. So, let we will see a quick example and see what the state assignment can do to different kinds of sizes. So, let us take a small example, this is a state machine. So, let us forget the state diagram, we have a state table and in this state table there are 7 states from A to G and we have the uh, next state as well as output marked in the state table itself. Now, we can do two different kinds of assignments. So, clearly there are only uh, 7 states uh, and for 7 states we need 3 flip flops first of all. So, we have 3 flip flops, we can do different kinds of assignments. So, in assignment 1 we are going to try this, for A we are going to assign 0 0 0, for B we are going to assign 0 0 1, for C 0 1 1 and so on and assignment 2 we are doing something else. So, let us not worry about how this was arrived at. So, if you are not given anything, if you do not know how to do it uh, carefully, then you may come up with in fact any random assignment, right? any random assignment as long as each of the states gets a different vector that is actually a valid assignment. So, we have two valid assignments here, none of the states repeat within the assignment, for, uh, for different states we have different assignments. So, this is what I call by the state assignment. So, these are two different state assignments and let us see the implication of the two state assignments on the hardware that will get generated. So, we will assume that we are using JK flip flops in this in this example. Using assignment 1, uh, the circuit seems to have uh, take J 1 equals this, J 2 equals this and so on. So, again without questioning uh, how this was arrived at, I believe you know the process for that right now and let us also believe that it is done in the most optimal way. Then the assignment 1 seems to have these equations and assignment 2 seems to have these equations. So, you compare assignment 1 and 2 just by looking at the equations you can probably say that assignment 2 seems to be a bit complex whatever the definition of complex is it seems to be a bit complex. Let us go and validate that by counting the number of 2 input AND gates OR gates and so on. If I look at the 2 input AND gates, so there are 4 inverters there are 7 AND gates and 1 OR gate which makes a total of 14 gates and here there are 4 NOT gates, 11 AND gates and 3 uh, and 7 2 input OR gates making a total of 22 gates. So, you have 14 gates here and you have 22 gates here and the choice that we made instead of using assignment 1, we use assignment 2, you suddenly have a gate count which is greater than uh, this one and almost 50 percent greater than the previous assignment. So, the key thing is coming up with a state machine is one thing, given a problem you can come up with a state machine, 
and you can also do state minimization and reduce the number of states right so uh, let's assume that that actually happened here let let's assume that the uh, state machine is already minimized we cannot go to anything lesser than seven states so that is the case for this circuit here this state diagram here it cannot go to lesser than seven the choice of which assignment we are going to uh, make seems to make a difference in terms of the number of gates so in summary there are two things which can change the total total number of gates this could either be the uh, state diagram that you draw itself and the associated minimization that you do with it if you come up with a bad state diagram or if you don't minimize that can actually increase the number of gates second even if the state diagram is minimized and what not the state assignment that you do can actually impact the number of gates so we already addressed the first problem in the previous lecture we will look at the second problem in this lecture so the key thing is how do you do this assignment carefully if we look at s states in a state machine and let's assume that it requires n flip flops so if i have s states typically you need n in such a way that it's logarithm of s base 2 and the integer that is just greater than that so if i take uh, two states i require only one flip flop and there are two possible assignments let's say i have states s0 and s1 then there are two assignments that are possible i'll label the s0 state as 0 and s1 state as 1 or the s0 state as 1 and s1 state as 0 there are only two assignments so it's not a big deal in fact you may actually try both these assignments see which one gets the least amount of hardware and you can stick to it let's try and make it slightly larger if i have three states for three states you will require two flip flops but the number of assignments goes to 24 so uh, by the counting that i am doing is if i have s0 s1 s2 what are the different ways in which i can label them so i could assign s0 as 0 s1 as 1 s2 as 2 or s0 as 2 s1 as 3 uh, and uh, s2 as 0 there are several assignments that are possible it looks like there are 24 assignments that are possible and now if i want to find out the smallest number of gates then you may still be able to do it you have 24 assignments you try all the possible 24 combinations it's it's a bit of a laborious work you do all the 24 combinations you may still come up with the least number of gates however it quickly gets very ugly if i have six states then you need three flip flops so the three flip flops actually can represent eight states but you have only three states uh, only six states that are being used in the three flip flops and the number of assignments that is possible is 20000 so this is already infeasible you cannot do this uh, exhaustively and this gets very very ugly when s and n increase so if i have if i have eight states then it requires exactly three flip flops all the states will be com uh, complete all the bit combinations will be used and that seems to take 40000 uh, assignments so you have to pick one among these assignments which is the best and use it and if you increase the number of flip flops to 12 16 and so on it's already going into billions and trillions in fact in a real world machine the number of states is not even 16 it could be much 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 larger than this uh, so we are talking about hundreds and thousands and so on and if you have something like that the number of flip flops that is possible uh, will also be in the tens and hundreds and number of assignments is you cannot exhaustively search this is the key thing is you cannot exhaustively try all different state assignment state assignment combinations and pick the best one in fact you don't even do it manually so even if you do it with a computer it's still too many assignments and you cannot finish uh, this in any reasonable time so the state assignment problem is it is not practical to go through all the possible combinations either manually or using a computer and unfortunately there is no easy way in which you can determine this so this notion of optimal state assignment the state assignment which brings you the smallest number of gates unfortunately this is not something that you can do uh, there is no simple technique to do this what we need is we need what are called reasonably good assignments we don't as long as Uh, we follow some principles and come up with some way of solving this problem which is only reasonably good it may not be the best way to do it but it's a reasonably good way to do it as long as we have that then 
uh, such guidelines are useful in minimizing the amount of hardware. So, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use what are called heuristics. Heuristic is essentially a more like an intuition or an idea that it might work, but without any guarantee. So, for instance, when you drive from let us say your home to the railway station, you may have an intuition that this road is better than that road, this road gets more traffic than that road and so on and based on that you may actually take a decision. But this decision need not be the best decision because you assume that some road is not going to be with traffic, you go there and suddenly uh, there is traffic because of some accident. So, such things right you cannot uh, do anything about. So, in this case the, no, the word heuristic I am going to use that to indicate that you come up with some reasonable intuition about uh, doing, uh, doing a particular kind of assignment is going to actually help in reducing the number of gates and the heuristic as long as there is some bit of engineering principle in coming up with the heuristic it might, it might help in reducing the number of gates. So, the heuristic cannot be I will come up with a random assignment that, that does not uh, that there is no intuition about how to minimize the number of gates in that. However, if we uh, use what is called a bit change heuristic what we are going to do is we are going to look at the states and we are going to force large groupings of logic ones. So, I will show you a quick example in the next slide. Uh, so, as long, so we, we know this from the k maps if I have ones that are closer to each other then you can group them and reduce the number of gates right. We are going to try and do something very similar with states. So, what we are going to do is we are going to have a set of guidelines the, the guidelines are based on this. So, we are going to have guidelines based on the next state and the inputs and outputs. So, the highest priority of grouping would be given to states with the same next state for a given input should be given adjacent assignments in the state map. So, if I have a state with the same next state for a particular input. So, if I have a single bit x equals 0 and x equal to 1 or 2 possibilities of inputs on uh, the next state for a given input if you go to the same state they should be given adjacent locations. Medium priority is next states of the same state should be given adjacent assignments and the lowest priority is states with the same output for a given input should be given adjacent assignments. So, this picture will help you in understanding what I mentioned in the previous slides. Again we will use this in, uh, in an example later. Let us uh, let us look at this picture here. We have two states alpha and beta and alpha and beta both of them on the input i is going to the state called epsilon. So, there are two states on, on the same input they are going to a state called epsilon. What if you have cases like this you would want alpha and beta to have uh, state assignments which are close to each other. Then if you have a state like this if you have a single state let us say on uh, one input you go to alpha and the other combination of input you go to beta then you would like alpha and beta to be neighbors of each other in the state assignment. So, by neighbor they should have bit positions which are only a few bits different and finally, if you have two different states that go to two different states, but they have the same input output combination then you try and assign alpha and beta to adjacent states. So, this notion of adjacency means if I take the bit vector assigned to alpha and if I take the bit vector assigned to beta the number of bit flips that you have to go uh, that you have to make uh, in the bit position in the bit vector of alpha to get the bit vector of beta that is called adjacency. So, if you are given two different states at least there should be one bit difference because you want two different states to have two different state assignments. If the assignments differ by exactly one bit then they are adjacent if they uh, differ by two bit positions then it is one more distance away and so on. So, the case I was making was if alpha and beta are actually two different states which are heading to the same state then the binary assignment of alpha and the binary assignment of beta you should have them in such a way that they are very close to each other the number of bit flips that you should have for such cases should be minimized. So, let us see these guidelines these are only guidelines these are not rules these are guidelines let us see how to use the guidelines. So, I have put this picture here so that we can use this in, uh, in grouping and so on. So, let us start with this state diagram 
we have four states A, B, C, D and it will use two flip flops. There are several ways in which you can assign the states to A, B, C and D and we want to see how to assign it the best way. So, what we will do? So, what we want is for A, B, C and D, we want the combination 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 assigned. Let us see how to do that. So, let us go and look at the highest priority. Highest priority says if there are two states which are both going to the same state on the same input, try and make them closer to each other. You go and look at this setup here. You if you see at x equal to 0, there is c slash 0 and c slash 0. So, from state A and state B on input x equal to 0, we seem to go to the same state C. right? So, if this is A and this is B, we are both going to the same state C on the same input x equals 0. In this case, the outputs j and k also happen to be the same. So, what we would like is we would like A to be a neighbor of B because if you do that then the number of bit flips you require to go from here to here and here to here will be minimized. Then for x equal to 1 if you notice there are two states A and C both of them go to the same state D. So, we would like C also to be close to A in the bit assignment. Let us look at the medium priority guidelines. So, from a single state if you have two different states which are neighbors of each other we would like them to be closer. So, from A D and C are the neighboring states we would like D and C to be closer. From B A and C are the states to which you are heading out from B you have x equal to 1 goes to A x equal to 0 goes to C we want A and C to be neighbors of each other in the state assignment with respect to C it is D and B with respect to D it is B and A. So, some of these affinities are already captured here also, but it does not matter. So, sometimes you may also have the affinities uh, to be the same. So, what we have is we have from the medium priority guideline we have these affinities and finally, from the low priority guideline the low priority guideline says if you have two different states and if, if you get the same input comma output combination then you go to two different states. Uh, you do not care about whether these are adjacent or not you make alpha and beta to be adjacent. So, you go and look at x equal to 1 then they at x equal to 1 a b c all of them produce 0. So, with respect to x equal to 1 you want a b c to all be neighbors of each other and with respect to x equal to 0 again a b c states all of them have output 0 you would want them to be neighbors of each other. So, in this case the affinities that we are getting seem to be the same. Now, we have these affinities given these affinities we have still not made any assignment we want to make an assignment in such a way that the states a b c and d follow these affinities as much as possible not that you can always follow it you want to follow it as much as possible. So, let us look at all these adjacencies. So, this is from priority 1 this is from priority 2 and this is from priority 3 and we are going to do the state assignment in such a way that the highest priority things are taken care of first and so on. So, let us do one assignment first. So, since these are four states uh, what you do is you first draw a two variable k map. So, a two variable k map will have two flip flops q 2 and q 1 right? and in that you mark 0 1 and 0 1. You start with one of them right? you start with this one for instance you put a in one of these positions. What this guideline says is B and C should be adjacent to A. So, in this assignment you have A and if you go and look at B, B is closer but C is not. Right? Whereas, in this assignment C is closer but B is not in the third assignment C is closer as well as B. Right? So, with respect to the first priority this seems to take care of both the priorities whereas, these two do not. Then let us look at the next set of assignments C D A C B D A B and so on. So, you go and look at each one of them is C D close yes is A C close no B D close no A B close yes. So, of the four two of them are satisfied let us go and look at this is R C and D close no because they are 
they are not neighbors of each other you cannot group them if these are two ones in the truth table you will not be able to group them together right so these are not close to each other acs bds ab is not finally if you go and look at this cd yes they are neighbors of each other if these are both ones i can group them ac i can group together bd i can group together ab i can group together so it looks like assignment 3 is good even with respect to the second priority with respect to the third priority a, B and C should all be close to each other. These are three different states. Clearly, you cannot make group all of them together into one thing. So, as long as A, B, C are neighbors of each other, uh, that will uh, that will work. In this case, whatever you do, right, they will be neighbors of each other. So, in all of them, we have A, B, C which is a continuous thing. So, in the lowest priority is actually not useful in this one. Let us look at the assignment. This assignment seems to have the best uh, uh, best so it complies to these adjacency priorities the best so this assignment if we do if i assign 0 0 to a 0 1 to b 1 0 to c and 1 1 to d then that seems to give the best result for uh, this particular state machine so what i would like you to do is go and try out for assignment 1 and assignment 2 go and figure out the number of hardware uh, the hardware units how many AND gates and OR gates are required for each one of them. Compare that with what happens when you have assignment 3, you would notice that assignment 3 actually has the lesser gates. So, the reason why we want them to be neighbors of each other is that if they are neighbors of each other, later when you go and derive the next state and so on, you will be using these bit positions 1s and zeros and so on. They will become close to each other. So, if you go and look at the next state logic or the output logic, so, these are combinational circuits right. In these combinational circuits states which which are close to each other in the table that is shown here will put ones in the truth tables when you do the combinational minimization. That is the reason why we want to follow this heuristic. So, let us see a more uh, concrete example um, a bigger example. So, let us say I have a state machines with 8 states and I want to be able to do state assignment for this. So, again the priorities are given below. So, let us start with each one of them and see how to do this. So, let us start with uh, the highest priority guideline. Highest priority guideline says are there two states which are coming into the same state. Right. So, you go and look at this uh, with respect to x equal to 0, you go and look at are there states where you are coming in with x equals 0 itself. So, you look at d, d has an input with x equal to 0 and f has an input uh, with where x equals to 0 and if you go and look at g, g has no input with x equals to 0, e seems to have something with x equals to 0, c does not have, b seems to have something and so on. So, if I have two different states that are converging into the same state, so let us look at this uh, d and e, you look at d and e, both d and e on 0 is going to f. So, we would like D and E to be neighbors of each other. Similarly, if you look at F and G on 0, they both seem to go to A. So, we would like F and G to be neighbors of each other. In fact, on 1 also, they seem to go to the same state A. So, we want F and G to be neighbors of each other. This is the highest priority. The medium priority is the case where from a single state you are branching to two different states, you want them to be close to each other. So, for state A, from the states A perspective, you want B and C to be closer to each other. From B and C's perspective, you want D and E to be closer to each other. And from, uh, let us see, from D's perspective, it is only going to F. On both 0 and 1, it is going to F. So, there is no problem. From E's perspective, you want F and G to be closer to each other. From F's perspective, you are anyway going to A on both the transitions. On G, you go to A on both the transitions. So these are the set of preferences. So this D comma E would apply would come twice, once because of B and once because of C. Finally, in terms of grouping uh, uh, similar outputs and uh, input output combinations, if you look at zero zero combinations, then A B C D E F should all be together because they all have. Uh, outgoing transitions which are 0 0. So, you look at A it has a 0 0 transition, 
B has a 0 0 transition, C has a 0 0 transition and so on whereas F and G uh, so G does not have a 0 0 transition, G, uh, G has a 0 1 transition. You would like all these to be neighbors of each other with respect to uh, 0 0. With respect to 1 0, it looks like all the states have a 1 0 transition going out. So, all of them have to be neighbor of each other. So, you may not be able to satisfy this. Let us see how to do an assignment based on this. Again, the adjacencies are listed here. Let us see how to go about uh, doing this in a step by step manner. So, let us start with an assignment. In this case, there are 7 states, we need 3 flip flops. We start with uh, a 3 variable k map. We pick a state arbitrarily. Let us pick some state arbitrarily. I am going to put that at 0, 0, 0. So, I picked A arbitrarily, I put it at 0, 0, 0. Now, I am going to look at what are all the affinities for A. From So, there is no high priority affinity of A. In the medium priority, A and B has to be closer to each other, right? We want that. So, uh, I will not satisfy that right now because uh, that's not the highest priority affinity. Instead, I go and look at the highest priority affinity. I see that D should be closer to E. So, however, D has no affinity to A. So, you go and look at this. A should be close to B in the medium priority, right? So. I will I will not place D in the neighborhood of A, I am placing it away from A. So, if I take this A, this cell, this cell and this cell are all neighbors of A, I am not placing D in any of those. So, I could place D here, D here, D here or D here, I am taking D to be here. And uh, from the highest priority, I want E to be close to e, uh, D, so I put that close to each other. And then the other one that is left out is f comma g. So if you look at f comma g, uh, f comma g has no particular affinity to a, d, or e. In all these things, f and g, say f and g have to be close to each other, but they don't have affinity to d, e. Similarly, f and g by itself is there. There is no affinity to a or d comma e. The only thing is in this case, we see that out of f and g, f should be closer to e, a, b, c, d, and so on. So, one thing you can do is you can do an assignment for f and g here. So, f is still close to this d e thing for g there was no affinity that was asked for. So, g happens to be close to f that is all. Now, b and c are still left out we want b to be closer to a. So, there are two slots in which I can put b I pick one of them arbitrarily and a c could either be here or here again I pick c arbitrarily. So, you can see that there are lots of arbitrary things that I have done here. It is not it is not all decisions that are all very very careful. The only decisions that were careful are that D E must be separate from A because there is no affinity to A and D and E are neighbors of each other. And similarly, we decided that F and G could go anywhere, it could go into any of the positions. We decided that arbitrarily, the position of B was arbitrary the choice of A, the very first thing that we picked itself was arbitrary and so on. This is one of the assignments. Let us look at the state assignments. I now go and read Q3, Q2, Q1, right? So, I go and read the state assignment. So, for E, it is 1, 1, 1. For G, it is Q1, Q2, Q3. So, it is 1, 1, 0 and so on. That is the way in which you can get state assignment. There are other assignments possible. So, I will show you another assignment now. So, you start with A which is here. Now, you go and look at the next set of assignments. It looks like F and G right? and F has some affinity to A in these two cases. I put F and G here. We still have D and E and B and C, D and E. So, I put that here and I put B and C as it was before like this. So, this F G choice remember it was arbitrary. right? I picked I put f and g here and if I do this, the state assignment seems to be this. So, both these assignments actually satisfy all the high and medium priority guidelines as well as the low priority guidelines. If you look at a, b, c, d, e, f, g, they are all neighbors of each other. a, b, c, d, e, f is also some continuous chunk. a, b, c, d, e, f is some continuous chunk. a, b, c, d, e, f is some continuous chunk and g happens to be separate in each one of those. 
so this is one assignment so for each of these assignments you can go and try out the number of gates and see whether this one reduces the number of gates or this one reduces the number of gates i would like you to do this as an assignment yourself so this is again a seven state state machine and uh, these are the state transitions i would like you to use the heuristics and come up with an assignment possible for this so in this whole setup it's possible that there are unused states so state so if i have a if i have n flip flops it can actually represent 2 power n different states but you may not have 2 power n different states you may have only s different states in which case what happens is you are not using all the possible combinations of the flip flops to represent a valid state so these unused states or the unused state vectors are a problem so in the previous example here the vector 0 1 0 is not assigned to any state in this assignment the vector 1 0 0 0 is not assigned to any state in this assignment so these are unused states when you look at these unused states they can cause a problem so there are two approaches to deal with unused states one thing you can do is you can do what is called the minimal cost approach in the minimal cost approach you assume that the machine will never enter an unused state by any mistake and you put a don't care wherever you see an unused state so if you want to reduce the overall cost the unused states are all marked as uh, marked as minimal cost so this is okay if you know that under no circumstances you may actually enter into a illegal or an unused state so remember the moment you go into a state which is unused there are no transitions specified for this right so at x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 you don't know what to do there if you know for sure that you will never enter that state then we don't have to worry about what, uh, how to leave the state so that's the low cost approach the minimal cost approach then there is this other approach called the minimal risk approach here what you do is by accident if you somehow end up in the unused state you put some state transitions there in such a way that you get to some known state so both these things have issues so minimal cost and minimal risk both of them have issues but the primary reason why may why something like this can happen is that when you power up the circuit for instance you may not know what the values of the flip flops are you should not assume that when i turn on the turn on a chip automatically all the flip flops will be zeros or will be ones and so on we cannot assume that so the flip flops may, may actually open up or uh, start in any which state unless you have actually put an explicit reset so that you bring all the states to some known condition this may be a problem so typically what you do is as a good design philosophy you go and have an explicit reset state so that you power on the machine you do a reset so that all the flip flops start with some known values and uh, if you don't do that it's possible that you go you can go you can start the circuit in an unused state the other reason why you may enter into an unused state is that Uh, there is some problem in the circuit and it could be because of a timing violation more often than not that a flip flop uh, is supposed to be uh, so you are supposed to go from a clean state a to clean state b however you go through some transition and you get stuck somewhere in the middle so this can happen and we will see uh, some of these design issues and philosophy behind how to design state machines in a later video but there are two ways in which you can use uh, handle unused states either you can treat the unused states as don't cares or for each and every unused state you go and put explicit transitions so that you actually end up using it there is one final thing that i want to talk about in state assignment that's the notion of one hot encoding so so far we have been looking at what is called a dense encoding in a dense encoding what we do is the number of flip flops that we use we want to be stringent about that we want to use as few bits as possible to represent the states one hot encoding is an alternate approach what we do is we use as many flip flops as there are states if i want a n state state machine instead of using log n flip flops i will use n flip flops and we will do what is called one hot encoding one hot means at any point of time of so we know that the state machine should always be in exactly one state at any point of time right so whatever inputs you give and so on your state machine can be in exactly one state at any point of time 
this is exactly one means it can be in at most one state and it can it should be in at least one state that is what gives you uh, exactly one state. If you want to reflect that you come up with n flip flops and you have to give a guarantee that exactly one of these flip flops will be on and all the other flip flops will be off this is called one hot. So, in one hot encoding what you do is for a machine with n states you use exactly n flip flops and the one hot condition is that each state is represented by a n bit binary code in which exactly one bit is asserted. So, let us see the example here. So, for the same uh, picture that I showed earlier uh, this is the state diagram and for binary encoding we have to do a lot of heuristics and so on right. Instead here what you do is you uh, you come up with one hot assignment. So, there are 7 states the first thing you do is you put 7 flip flops q 1 to q 7 and if you want to represent the case you are in state q you are in state 1 which is for a we assign q 1 equals 1 we assign all the other flip flops to 0. So, this state assignment we associate with a the assignment 0 1 followed by all zeros we associated that b and we give for each one of them some combination. So, it is uh, in this case f happens to be 0 0 1 followed by many zeros g is uh, many zeros 1 0 and so on. If you notice the state assignment here all of them are one hot there is exactly 1 1 and all the other combinations are 0 and the state assignment also requires that you cannot have the same state vector for two different states. So, we do not have that here. So, this is called a one hot encoding. The nice thing about one hot encoding is that if you inspect a particular flip flop you can say that you are in that state or not. So, if at any point of time I give you the state register you can go and see uh, what is the one and you can tell me that you are in that state and not in any other state. So, there are lots of uses uh, because of this one hot encoding. So, if you go back to binary encoding right you have the canonical you have the state register which in some sense is compressing. So, let us look at the picture here you have a state register right this uses log n flip flops for n states you have some input forming logic and some output forming logic. So, the current states and the inputs form the outputs the current states and the inputs form the next state. So, this is the input forming logic this is the output forming logic. So, because you have uh, uh, encoded it densely when you have to go and do things like uh, for this state then the output must be 1 and so on technically you are actually decoding it here within this circuit you decode here and you decode here because you have encoded the states here. Whereas, when you do this in one hot, one hot encoding you actually do not do that. So, there is something nice that happens in one hot encoding in one hot encoding the decoding is actually simpler if you want to find out if you are in a particular state you only inspect that bit. So, if I want to implement this using d flip flops I go and look at d 1. So, I want to look at what are all the conditions at which q 1 should be on for the dense encoding that seems to be some complicated equations right. So, I have to go and derive it I have to put it in the k map and so on whereas, if I want to go and look at each one of these conditions. So, you go and look at this d 1 should be on when either q 3 or q 6 is on. So, what that says is you if you have so you go and look at a what are all the conditions under which you will come to a you should be in either f state or it should be in g state. So, go and look at f state for at f state you have q 3 is on g state you have q 6 is on. So, if either q 3 or q 6 is on the next state you will go to a that is what this means. Let us go and look at uh, d 3 for instance. So, the we are looking at state uh, associated with q 3. So, let us look at the state as f, f is the state associated with q 3. Let us look at all the combinations in which you come to f. If you are in d you go to f whether it is 0 or 1 you go to f, but if you are in e if the input is 0 you go to f. So, this is something you can derive by looking at what is the state assignment for d. For state assignment d we have given q 4 for state uh, for assignment of e we have given q 7. 
So, if q 4 is on no matter what x is you will come to f. So, that is q 4. If you are in q 7 and if the input is x, x input x is 0 then you come to f that is captured by q 7 x bar. So, by just looking at the picture without doing any minimization I can write these equations down you do not have to do anything at all right. And if you go and look at the outputs let us go and look at the circuit where the output is. Um, so, it seems to be that uh, the output let us see where the 1 is ah, here if you are in state g with x equals to 0 you are producing output of 1 you go and look at the state assignment for g that is q 6. So, if you are in q 6 and if the input is 0 which is x bar then the output must be 1 that is all right. So, it is as simple as that for there is no decoding at all the decoding is as simple as looking at a particular bit position and inspecting whether it is 1 or 0. So, what we have is a very nice encoding mechanism and you do not have any logic at all even though you have used a lot more flip flops the amount of logic that you use for decoding is uh, very very simple. So, sometimes this 1 hot encoding is preferred over dense encoding because the uh, decoding logic. So, every time I have to inspect which state and so on it gets reduced. So, this is much nicer especially when you use what are called FPGAs. FPGAs have a lot of flip flops doing 1 hot encoding is actually preferred in FPGAs compared to other techniques. So, this brings me to the end of uh, this lecture and in module 32 we saw state assignment and we saw quite a few heavy duty things in module 32 and I suggest that you go back and work, work on the examples I have been repeating this in every video I suggest that you go back and look at the examples until you do that you may not get all the concepts right. So, I am showing you one example unless you try other examples you may not get all the concepts right and if you do not understand something please come back on the forum and do ask questions on the forum uh, about these examples or something that you make up. So, thank you and I will see you in the next module bye bye.